Yo, what is going on guys? In today's video, we are going to be spending 100 days in the Minecraft Pixelmon mod. Here are my objectives. Acquire the Mega Stone for my starter Pokemon. Defeat 8 Gym Leaders and capture the mythical Pokemon Arceus. On day one, I had to pick my starter Pokemon and it was a pretty tough decision because I never had that many options to choose from. But ultimately, I ended up picking Torchic as my starter Pokemon. I spawned in the Extreme Hills biome and saw a lot of Pokemon around me. I saw some smoke that was coming from the ground and went to investigate. I got my first item which was a sharp beak and made sure to keep it for when I catch a flying Pokemon. I saw a wild Sita and wanted to fight it but my Torchic ended up getting stuck in a tree. Later, a Pachirisa randomly attacked me and I used Ember to win my first Pokemon battle and got some rabbit fur and found an electric gem on the ground. I found a wild Pikachu and I was able to take him down using Ember and was rewarded with some glowstone dust and a thunderstone shard. I fought a Silcoon and one shotted him with Ember. I challenged a Squovit and ended up being punished for it. After further exploring, I was able to find a village with a gym connected to it. I went to get a sneak peek of the gym and it turns out it was a water gym. Then made my way towards the Pokemon Center to heal my Pokemon and I got myself a bed. After healing Torchic, I saw that there was a chest with a lot of heals inside of it. I went to the villagers and it turned out they had some quests for me. I went to visit the Pokemon and sold some items I got from the chest in the Pokemon Center and bought some Pokeballs so I can start catching some Pokemons. I gathered some wood, made an axe and a pickaxe and went to sleep. The next day, I made a chest so I could store all of the items that I got so far in order to make some space in my inventory. I accepted some more challenges, fought against a Rattata, planted some apricorns, and fought a Zigzagoon. A Chikorita spawned near me and I really wanted to catch it. He ended up killing my Torchic so I had to throw a Pokeball at him outside of the battle. But when my Great Ball disappeared after throwing it, I just decided to let him go. I squared up against the Murkrow and my Torchic learned Flame Charge. I fought against a Voltorb and got a Poke Base for my Pokeballs. I decided to farm some carrots from the village and I saw a huge Beedrill that was just chilling by the Pokemart. I challenged it and got one-shotted. Later that day, I fought against a milk tank that destroyed me and gave me PTSD of a certain gym leader that had a milk tank on their team. I also saw an ultra wormhole that spawned near me, so I decided to build towards it and by the time I got close, it disappeared. Being bummed out that I couldn't enter the wormhole, I decided to do the normal Minecraft stuff and went to go mining for some resources. I got some coal and iron and went back to the area I was going to settle. I placed a furnace, some chests, and organized my loot. I accepted some more challenges, destroyed a sentry with my Torchic that later evolved into a Combusken. Later that day, I went to the extreme hills and found myself a Larvitar. I really wanted to capture it, but it ended up knocking me and destroying my Pokeballs. I found another one and it killed me as well. I was so desperate to catch it, so I went back to the village that I found and got some resources. Went back to the hills and I finally caught myself a Larvitar. Another wormhole spawned near me and when I built towards it, it disappeared again. I made some running boots to make sure that they wouldn't escape me, but after finding it for a third time, it just wouldn't let me in. I guess they just don't like me. Later on, I found a Snivy, but forgot to record, which was pretty unfortunate. Now that I had a grass type Pokemon, it was finally time to take on the water gym. But when I challenged the trainers, it was pretty much a double kick fest for my Combuskin since that he was over leveled and was able to single handedly destroy all of the trainers and the gym leader. There was a spinning tranquil and I decided to catch it because I thought I was able to fly it but it turns out that I couldn't. In order to fly him, I had to evolve him to his third stage but I just didn't want to do it. On day 10, after fighting a trainer, my Snivy was able to evolve into a Servine, and my Combuskin later evolved into a Blaziken after destroying a poor little Wooloo. I did some exploring and found a village with a gym. I took the heals from the Pokemon Center and made my way towards the fire gym. This gym was relatively easy because my Blaziken was able to once again just double kick his way through the entire gym with ease. I made sure that my Larvitar got some XP while my Blaziken just went to town and destroyed everyone. Once I got to the gym leader, he dynamaxed his Litwick, but it was no match for my Blaziken. He swept through his Monferno, Charmeleon, Slugma, Combuskin, and Ponyta. I was rewarded with my second gym badge and a TM. Outside the gym was a snow biome, and I decided to do some exploring. I fought a bear tick, and he gave me a lot of ice and fish. 
I also found a structure that looked pretty cool and had something at the top of it. I had no idea what it was for so I just left it there. Right next to it, I found a level 50 pile of swine and caught it because I wanted to get myself a mammoth swine, one of my favorite ice type pokemons. I also just realized that I could ride my Blaziken too, which was pretty cool. I also found an Ampharos that was level 50 and decided to catch it as well. I was surprised that the snow biome had so many pokemons that were high level and I knew this was going to be a good area to train in. I found another structure just chilling there and found a huge Magikarp peeking out of the water. I went inside and this place had an entire living area inside of it and a lot of fishing rods, fishes and other resources inside the chests. I thought that maybe this was one of Team Rocket's submarine that was just abandoned here. Once I got out, there was a message saying that one of the legendary trio dogs Suicune spawned in the cold beach biome and I decided to challenge him. I really wanted to catch him but when I saw his level, I knew that this was not going to be possible because he was level 70 and he would just destroy my entire team. So I just ran from the battle. On day 12, I made a PC and placed it in the Pokemon Center. I left the Trenkle in there because I wanted to find another flying Pokemon for my party. Later that day, I found a swamp biome and saw Yan Mega spinning. I don't know why all these Pokemons were spinning, but I ended up defeating it. I found a single Pokemon Center and took the heals inside. I also found an Ilex Shrine for the mythical Pokemon Celebi. Found another Pokemon Center and took the heals. Found another Pokemon Center and took the heals. Another Pokemon Center, I took the heals. Found a Savannah Biome with a village, I took the heals. Another Center, I took the heals. Went back to the Savannah Village and looted the Blacksmith that had diamonds. Took the heals and explored the Sand Biome where I found a Trap Inch. Caught it and added it to my team. By the beach there was a boat and I decided to go in. It had a really nice decor and like the Magikarp submarine, it had a lot of fishes, fishing rods, and other loot. Found two Pokemon Center close to each other and took the loot. I decided to make my way back home and found the Rowlet. I caught it and decided to replace it for my Servine because I thought that it was a cool starter and it killed two birds with one stone, now I have a grass and flying Pokemon. On the next day, I made myself a mechanical anvil in order to speed up the process in making Pokeballs. So now I don't need to continuously smack the anvil. Harvested some apricorns and evolved Rowlet into Dartrix. I used the fishing rod that I got and found a fortune 3 book. This was also a good place to train my Larvitar, which then later evolved into a Pupitar. On day 19, I found my third gym, which was a ground type gym. I also took some heals from the Pokemon Center. Challenging the gym was not that hard due to the fact that all I had to do was spam Earthquake and when they would throw out Gligars, my Palace Swine would just wipe them with my ice moves. So I was able to easily defeat the gym and acquire a TM move and my third gym badge. Another gym was close to the ground one and it turned out to be another fire gym. Thinking this would be an easy gym, I decided to instantly challenge it. Turns out this gym was actually a little harder due to the fact that I was now under leveled. I went to go heal and saw Mirko jump in the lava. I went back and attempted to finish the gym and I was able to get all the way to the gym leader. But once I got to him, defeating him was not going to happen because he was extremely strong so I decided to start training my team. I got my dart tricks to Decidueye, Trap Inch to Vibrava, I was now able to fly with both of them and challenged a Mega Ampharos and was rewarded with the Mega Keystone and picked the bracer from the game for me to equip. It looked dope. I also didn't know how to mega evolve and didn't realize that they literally tell you on the top right of the screen, but I found out that I was able to mega evolve in battle, so I guess that works. I completed a quest that rewarded me with beast balls. I went to the snow biome and continued my training and I was able to get a Tyranitar. So after all that training, I went to the fire gym again, but was distracted because a Spectre spawned in a swamp biome so I decided to check it out and challenge him. I actually didn't buy the DLC for Sword and Shield so I didn't really know what this Pokemon did but I ended up catching him and leaving him in my party for fun. Back home a Zacian spawned and I landed a critical hit on him and killed him. Uh, he gave me a diamond sword. I went to collect some obsidian because I really wanted to explore the nether. I found a golden hoo hoo chilling in the trees and was rewarded with a rare candy and Master Ball for defeating it. Went back to the ice biome and evolved my Vibrava into a Flygon. 
while fighting a Greedent, a Glacier spawn, which was Spectra's counterpart, I think. While trying to catch him, he hit himself with recoil, which was pretty unfortunate, I guess. On day 48, while training in the cold beach, I found the Piplup, and I wanted to catch him so badly because I spent so much time training in this biome and trying to find him. He had an ultra rare spawn rate, so I knew this was my only chance to catch him. Except, he wouldn't stay in the ball. I spent so much time trying to catch it that it literally went from night to day. None of my Pokemons were able to lower his HP because they were all so high leveled, so I used my Tyranitar's Sandstorm ability to lower it to red. I was getting impatient, and there was also a shiny Zigzagoon that spawned in the background and I wanted to catch it. So I said screw it, I threw my Master Ball at it, I slapped the Slowpoke, flicked towards the Mega Blastoise, and tried to find a shiny Zigzagoon, but it was too late. It had already despawned. Hey, at least I caught a Piplup in a Master Ball. Was worth it though. That night, he evolved into a Primplup. Damn, I really wish I caught that shiny man. I made another portal and jumped straight in. But before that, I went back and took Spectre out of my party. It just didn't feel right to use a legendary on my team. Back in the nether, I found a Mega Boss Sableye. Defeated him and got a rare candy, fistplate, and a Sablenite. Did some more training and found out that Turtonators dropped Shulker Shells, which is pretty neat. I defeated a Clink and was able to evolve my Primplup into an Empoleon. I found a Mega Banette and got a rare candy, Splash Plate, and a Banettite. Later, I went to the Sand Biome at night to find one of my favorite Pokemon, Gibble, which then evolves into the Beast Garchomp, which is also one of the mascots of this channel. I then evolved him into a Gabite and then into Garchomp. Finally, my team was complete. In the overworld, a Keldeo spawned near the gym and I ran towards him and challenged it. My Garchomp was able to lower his HP to red pretty easily and I captured him after only throwing two Ultra Balls. I was also able to ride him and he was really fast, but I didn't want to use him on my team. I went to the Savanna biome and ended up finding a Mega Blaziken. I knew I had to beat him because I wanted to Mega Evolve my Blaziken. He made the process easier by hitting himself with recoil. I Mega Evolved against a boss level Kafan to show how badass my Blaziken was and destroyed him. Victini also decided to spawn, but my Tyranitar killed him with his Sandstorm ability. Flew around the desert biome and found myself in a temple with a lot of good loot including a GS ball. I also found an old structure nearby, which I believe had the Chalice of Arceus in the middle of it and I knew that I would have to come back here in the future. Flew around the savanna biome and another Victini spawned in the wild but my Tyranitar one shot it with his earthquake. I didn't know he was going to be that weak. After all the training that I did, I knew that it was time to rematch the fire gym later. This time, it was really easy because my Tyranitar was able to knock out every single Pokemon with the use of Earthquake. And with that, I was able to collect my fourth gym badge. I did some more exploring and found myself another ground gym badge. My Empoleon and Decidueye were the main MVPs in clearing the gym, and they were able to breeze through with their water and grass moves as they were super effective against the gym. Once I got to the leader, the battle was a bit harder than expected. His Pokemons were causing me problems for my team, so I decided to do some more training. While going back home, I stumbled upon a Crystal Onyx. I was surprised because I didn't think this mod would have Pokemons from the anime, but seeing them add these types of Pokemon makes the mod even better. In base, there was a boss Wulu that dropped me a lucky egg. Now the grind to level up my Pokemon was going to be easier. I went back to the nether to train, and a Heatran spawned near me. I found him just chilling in the lava and decided I wanted to catch him. After some training in the nether, I went back to the ground gym leader and had a much easier time. My Tyranitar and Flygon were the ones that carried against this gym leader and helped me get my 5th gym badge. On day 86, I was able to find my 6th gym badge, which was a grass type, and I knew that I wouldn't have a hard time because I had a fire type on my team. Turns out I was wrong and the first trainer was able to absolutely destroy me. So I went back to base and used all of the rare candies that I gathered throughout this adventure and gave them to my Blaziken. He went from level 59 to 74. I went back to the gym and my Blaziken had a much easier time with the assist of Empoleon. This gym also did not have that many trainers, which means getting to the gym leader was going to be quick. Once at the gym leader, my Blaziken was able to take out Shiftry with one flare blitz, but suffered against Ludicola. I threw up my Empoleon to revive and restore my Blaziken to full HP. Flygon and Tyranitar were able to deal a lot of damage to this team, 
and Blaziken was the one that dealt the final blow. And with that, I was able to get my 6th gym badge. After that, I decided to look around and found myself a mesa biome, and there was a mega camera up waiting for me at the entrance. I spammed some earthquakes and got some cool rewards. The next day, I found a water type gym and challenged it. I was kinda sad that most of the gyms that I found had types that I already fought and wanted to have more diversity in the gyms, but that was okay. At least I was able to run through the gym. Once at the leader, it was pretty much a Decidueye and Flygon duo. They were able to sweep through the gym leader and I used other Pokemons in my party to revive them when they died. After using Earthquake on Relicanth, I finally got my 7th gym. On the night of day 93, I found a gym with a huge Pokeball on top of it. It was a Steel Gym, and I knew this gym was going to be fun because I was able to use all of my Pokemons. Garchomp, Tyranitar, and Flygon spammed Earthquake. I had Blaziken in the back just in case, and if I needed to revive some Pokemons, Decidueye and Empoleon were the ones that tanked the damage. Once I got to the gym leader, it was pretty much an Earthquake spam like the other trainers in the gym, and reviving any of my Pokemons that had to move Earthquake. And with that, I finally acquired all 8 gym badges, and it was time to make my way towards the end. Funny enough, I actually never have beaten the Ender Dragon ever since his release, and I guess the first time I was going to beat it was with Pokemons on my team. Now I have watched some Minecraft gameplay of the Ender Dragon, and I knew that me being able to fly towards the beacon was actually going to be overpowered, but with it being my first time, I actually didn't know how the beacons work and died many times in the process, which was pretty funny and frustrating. I was scared that I was not going to be able to beat the Ender Dragon, because I thought a bow was needed in order to destroy the beacons. But I found a way to destroy the beacons and it was by keeping my distance and placing a block in front of me. I'm pretty sure all of you guys noticed already, but it helped me so much now that I knew this and was able to beat the ender dragon. I died a lot in the process, acquired an ender dragon egg from a villager right before defeating it, died a few more times, destroyed all of the beacons and was finally able to defeat the ender dragon. Took all of his XP and fought against a Mega Absol and jumped in the portal. It felt a little weird beating the game with mods, but hey, I'll take it. I went to the Ultra Space and found myself a Shiny Maractus. I was super excited because that Shiny Zigzagoon still haunts me. After many days trying to find the remaining of the plates in the Ultra Space and fighting a couple of bosses, I was able to gather all of the plates required to summon the Azure Flute. I made my way towards the Chalice and put all of them in it. After a pretty cool ceremony, I got myself the Azure Flute. I went to the extreme hills where I found two spear pillars close to each other. I went to the one further in the back and summoned the god of all Pokemons, Arceus. He had a pretty cool entrance appearing from the ground and he instantly challenged me. The battle felt a bit awkward because all of his moves didn't affect my Decidueye because he was part ghost type. I used Leaf Blade in order to lower his HP to red. He had the move recover which made him able to bring his HP to half but that wouldn't be a problem since my Decidueye would just bring it back to half HP. There were a couple of times where my heart dropped because the Leaf Blade would land a critical hit and I thought I would kill him, but luckily Arceus would survive with only a couple of HP. After being in this battle from literally night to day, I knew that I could switch to throwing timer balls instead because the catch rate was extremely high. And after a couple of throws, I was finally able to catch him and I rode him as well. I also gave him an insect plate so that he would have my favorite color green on him and I rode him again. Well, that's the end of this video and I hope you guys enjoyed my Pixelmon journey. Although it did take more than 100 days, I didn't want it to end without catching Arceus. I had so much fun playing this mod and would recommend to anyone who plays Minecraft and is a fan of Pokemon. It also brought me many fun memories that I'll never forget. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a sub and a like as it helps the channel and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.